What's up, everybody? This is DDP, and this is Feeling Dangerous. Now, it's been a little bit since I've gotten to talk about some, some sports here, but we're going to rectify that today by focusing on last night's Dallas Stars game. That's right. I said the Dallas Stars. We're talking a little bit of hockey here. This is officially a first for the Dallas Prospect channel. Obviously a first for feeling dangerous. But you know what? While I am certainly not a diehard hockey fan, I cannot deny playoff hockey is crazy intense. It has the speed of basketball as if every play is a fast break. The physicality of football. The low scoring of... I, I would I was going to say baseball, but sometimes baseball can be really high scoring, as can hockey. Uh, let's say like baseball slash soccer. And the drama and everything is just crazy in the playoffs. Like watching a Stars game in the regular season, even if it was when they were doing well, I still couldn't get that invested in it. It was kind of like, oh, sweet, they won. Excellent. Playoff hockey, dude, I hung on every minute of last night in that, in that game. I hung on the edge of my seat the entire game. So the puck dropped at roughly 740 and everything, and they end up going to overtime against the uh, top seed, not the top overall seed, but the home team essentially in this series, the Nashville Predators. Dallas, man, they ended the season hot, and they have entered into the postseason as one of the hotter teams in the NHL. And they take this series in six games. They won twice already in Nashville, which is a tough task. Through the first three games, they really struggled a little bit to kind of find themselves. It didn't really feel like they got outplayed so much other than maybe one game. It really felt like they just hadn't put it all together yet. And then that's why you saw three straight wins to close out the series after falling behind 2-1. Great, great performance by the Stars last night. Gritty as hell. Not only, you know, I mentioned they win two in a row before this. I think they went up 5-0 in one game or 5-1 in the previous home game. And then they go to Nashville, get another win, another gritty win. But they put up points. They scored another, like, four goals in the return trip to Nashville. So you really felt confident coming into this game. But you knew at the same time, Nashville was going to throw everything, everything, everything they had at the Stars because their season was on the line. It makes sense. It's just like any sport. When your back is against the wall, you're going to come out aggressive early and you're going to try and punch them in the mouth because you're hoping, in this case, if you're Nashville, you're hoping that the Stars were going to be kind of knocked off their game and basically say, well, we're going to try and win this, but if we don't, we got one more game to look forward to. And you, if you're probably looking at it thinking, you know, we've won two of three in Nashville, so yeah, I feel pretty good. Uh, that we could go get there and get a Game 7 or at least have a good shot at it. A a not mentally tough team might have done just that, might have taken that approach when Nashville jumped out into this Game 6 and grabbed an early, like within the first few minutes, an early 1-0 lead. Ben Bishop, he's had a couple of struggles uh, in recent games. I know he had a couple goals he led up in their game where they won 5-3 at home, I believe. Uh, he gave up a couple late goals that he was upset with. And, you know, they lost in game two in overtime. Another, The only other overtime game in this series. Uh, and it it felt important, but good God was Ben Bishop good last night. And so was, uh, and keep in mind here, something here again, I'm not a diehard hockey fan, so I'm probably going to butcher a lot of these names. Uh, Rene? Rene? The, the Predators goalie? phenomenal as well man tip of the cap to both of them last night uh as i understand it if you get like 30 saves in a hockey game you had a pretty damn good game both guys nearly go for 50 saves a piece i believe renee had 49 and bishop had 47 this game back and forth i felt like nashville played the best game they had of the series now again this is the first time i had seen the entirety of a playoff game in this series so i can't pretend like that i'm fully on top of it i've watched the breakdowns and read up and kind of followed it from a little bit of afar watched segments of it here and there a period here and there but this was the first time that i was free for the evening to sit down and watch the whole thing and man oh man have i been missing out i totally get it now i think i am fully bought in to the excitement of this team 
because they didn't just end the regular season hot. They are showing true grit and determination in this game. Nashville jumped out early, and it felt like their best game of the series. Felt like they were hitting the stars with haymakers left and right. That first goal gets past Bishop early on in the first six minutes of the game. He shuts it down after that. But to Nashville's credit, they largely did that to the Stars. It was midway through the second period when the Stars finally get on the board, uh, get a goal from, I believe it was uh, Como, uh, get a great shot there on a break, and ties the game up at one. We don't get anything else until late overtime. There, there were opportunities, but it felt like Nashville was getting these odd man breaks and getting all these just fantastic opportunities to perhaps put the stars away. And Dallas just wouldn't do it. Bishop made great save after great save after great save. And it felt like for the longest time watching that, it felt like eventually with the great looks that Nashville was getting compared to the stars, who they couldn't get really a clean look anywhere, it felt like. And they had a few opportunities late, but... For the longest time, they were not getting clean looks. Nashville's defense was phenomenal, I thought, in this game. Had this game gone to a Game 7, ooh, 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 I would not have felt super secure if I was uh, the Stars. Now, again, I say this as a more of a hockey outsider, but still, very, very gutsy performance from Nashville. They, they were getting the looks. It felt like eventually the dam was going to break. You know, you keep punching the brick wall over and over and over, in this case, the brick wall being Ben Bishop, Eventually, you anticipate something's going to crack, something's going to give. And I was nervously anticipating that moment, and it did not come. Bishop locked it down, kept it going. I'll tell you, when I was the most scared was late in the game. The final, I think it was like a minute 54 left in the game. Uh, Nashville goes on the power play. I think it was uh, Cuomo, again, uh, got called for tripping. He's in the penalty box, and you're just sitting there like, oh, no. Oh, no. (laughs) <laughs> they have a one-man advantage now, the final two minutes of the game. They have not scored on the power play all series, 0 of 13 to that point. And you're just sitting there like, oh, God, they're going to have it happen now for the first time, and that's what's going to send us to a Game 7 in Nashville. And you're just thinking about that from, like, the Stars' morality and all that, and you're like, God, that would be so deflating to lose there in that way. Even though you got one more game to play for, but just full momentum swing, kind of like uh, the 2011 World Series with the Rangers. Twice they get a two-run lead in the bottom of the, first it was the ninth, and then it was the 10th after that, I believe, or maybe the 11th. It's been a long time for that. All I know is twice you're one strike away, and you can't put them away. And even though, yeah, they lost that game, and it's going to a game seven, nobody, nobody, nobody really thought that the Rangers were going to be able to take back that momentum. And that's kind of how this would have felt for the Stars had they lost on a power play. But they gritted out again some late, late scares there. They're able to force overtime. And man, oh man, in overtime, it goes down to, I want to say, like the four-minute mark of overtime. It's another 20-minute period. And it goes down to the four-minute mark. And I'm just sitting there just like... Practically like watching between my fingers, just like, oh God, oh, oh my God, dude, that was exhilarating to watch. You, you talk about physical, you talk about just how intense it is. Think about it this way. I was listening to the ticket earlier today and I believe it was uh, Craig Miller on the Musers uh, talking a little bit about it and uh, he made some good points that I wanted to kind of reiterate here. What makes playoff hockey feel so much more intense? I mentioned earlier the speed of basketball, the physical, like speed of basketball and the fast break in particular, the physicality of football, the low scoring element as well. All that plays into it. But there's also, he made a very good point, an ice puck on ice, an ice puck, really, really DDP? Come on now. (laughs) A puck on ice is so, so much more difficult to control. Even just on your own, let alone, you know, all the other all the other defenders and everything slapping at the stick, trying to deflect the puck and all that. It's just crazy to control. If you're in the playoffs for basketball, a guard on a playoff team can dribble, can handle the ball, can do all of that. The only time you're going to get into trouble there is going to be if the ball, in this case, is knocked away from him or stolen by the defender. But generally... He's got it. He's under control. There are times in the game last night where you saw both for the Stars and the Predators where 
Like, you see the perfect pass come, and it's like all the guy has to do is just handle it and get the shot off, and he, he fumbles it a little bit, and you're like, oh, it's just hockey. It's just even at that level, you're still going to have those moments where you have these highly trained athletes who just can't get a handle on the puck in that moment at that situation because it's just so much more unpredictable. It's not like it gets to the gets to their stick and then it's just glue, you know? It, it's a lot more difficult. It's not basketball where everybody pretty much can palm the ball to help them control it. Uh, another element as well that makes hockey so, like every play feels so crazy intense. The simple fact that you can score in any way in hockey. Like the crowd you get down around the nets, you have that element. So you have the ricochet element that you don't have in other sports, not just them checking it off the board or you know, flinging it down the ice, but uh, you get these ricochets, whether it's off of your teammate, whether it's off of the other team, it's just you get this crowd in front of the goal. The goalie has to try and see through the crowd, see where the puck is and control everything. And then, yeah, you're going to have deflections that happen where the goalie sees the puck and he's making the proper move, but it's going to just graze this guy in front of him shoulder pad. And now instead of coming to his upper left corner, it's going to drop down into the bottom right and the goalie's just effed. That's just kind of how it works. You don't have that element in basketball, right? Like how many times do you see in basketball the guy go up for a rebound, a defensive rebound, and accidentally tip it in on his own basket? It happens, but it's certainly not common that is an element that's just commonplace in hockey. Like, there's so much of that kind of scoring that you'll see where it just makes every play feel like, oh, oh, like, it's just intense. You don't have that in another sport, so it's just stressful. It's draining, but it's also exhilarating. And man, oh man, credit to the Stars, they did not let this get away. They wanted to close this out. And I don't think it's just because they looked at it and said, hey, we're, we're the better team in this series and we want to immediately focus now on to the next round after this. I think it's more so that they looked at it and they said, we have our foot on their neck. We've beaten them convincingly now the last two games after you know, fairly even fist fight basically through the first three games. We've proven we can win on their ice, but you know what? We don't want to give them a puncher's chance. If we take our foot off their throat right now, they're going to get up and they're going to throw some more haymakers, and one of those might land. You never know. And so they stuck with it. You would have thought that the Stars season was also on the line. You would have thought that was Game 7 with the intensity of that game. The Stars played with absolute ferocity, and it was just, it was just incredible to watch. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. So the stars in this series, they win game one in Nashville, three, two lose in overtime game two, two, one lose again. The first game in Dallas, three, two, uh, then they win out the next three, five, one, five, three and two, one. So fantastic, fantastic performance from the stars. Now they're going to move on to the next round to play the St. Louis blues. Uh, three years ago when the stars were in the playoffs, then it was the blues that knocked them out. That was a different Stars team, though. That team couldn't defend to save its life. It did not have Ben Bishop in goal. Ben Bishop is a finalist. I don't remember the award's name off the top of my head. In hockey, everything's a, a trophy. Uh, but basically, the goalie of the year, Ben Bishop, is a finalist for that. And he's a big part of what has made that team good this year. And they, they caught on late. Uh, seems like they kind of figured some things out. And now they're red hot. They might just be one of those teams nobody wants to face. Because you got... Tyler Sagan, uh, Jamie Benn, Ben Bishop all playing out of their minds. You had Klingsberg who gets the gets the game-winning goal last night. Uh, Radulov had a fantastic series as well. And, you know, you got another, it's, you know, for the Mavs parallel, I don't know if he set the league on fire in the same way that Luka Doncic did for the Mavericks, but uh, Heskinen, uh, really, really special young player as well. I think he is going to be a monster for them moving forward, Heiskanen. And man, there's there's a lot to like there. There's a lot of... I don't know about their overall depth, but they have a very good offensive team and they can score in bunches. The thing is, in this next round, and again, I'm not a super in-tune hockey guy, so I'm just going off of 
what I've read this morning and what I've been hearing uh, on other sports talk shows. It sounds like against the Blues, we're going to see more games kind of like we saw last night where it's going to be low scoring, grinded out games. And as, that's part of why I think last night was so good for the Stars. That is a damn good quality win because it felt like it felt like Nashville threw everything they had at Dallas. And Dallas was able to still get away and hang in there. They took everything Nashville had to throw at them and they they made it they made it count. They got their haymakers in when they needed to, and they basically rope-a-doped them the entire game. And that is a gritty, character-building win. And I think that, especially now looking at the Blues, knowing that's how you're going to have to win games, this gives you confidence now. You don't go out. You know, if you had won like you did the previous two games where you just won in kind of blowout fashion where you built a big lead early and then just kind of played defense the rest of the time, I don't think that has the same character-building thing because... You gotta, you gotta see, man. When when the chips are down and you're getting punched in the mouth, you gotta know sometimes from experience. How am I gonna react to this? How am I going to answer this blow? And if you've experienced it, if you've kind of in that way tasted your own blood, you're game. You're ready. If you haven't, then you might not be, and it might show. So that's something to that's something to keep in mind now. Looking forward to this next series. You know, what are we looking at here with the Stars as they take on the Blues? The Blues are another very quality team. I don't know, man. I, I, I get the feeling from everything I've seen, everything I've read. The Stars look like they are a very hot team right now. Like they are that team that nobody really wants to play. But unless they can make noise in this next round, they might not start to get that real respect around the league because... The Stars winning, as I have up on the, the whiteboard behind me, this was their first time winning, like closing out a series at home in 11 years. 11 years. Three years ago, they won a series, but they won it on the road. And then they lost to the Blues in that round. That Stars team couldn't play defense to save its life. Uh, who is its Who were its goaltenders then? You had Lettinen and... Re His name was with an R. It's escaping me right now. But you had two goalies, basically, neither of which were great goalies. That's why they go out and get a Ben Bishop. And this year, Bishop has made a, a huge difference for this team. And now you're looking at kind of the foundation they're building out, and you're saying, this looks like a team that might be on the rise, like legitimately on the rise. And I don't know if they're maybe still a year or two away, but if they keep trending like this, they could be a real contender for the next several years. And that, man, that is exciting for Stars Hockey when you're talking about a team that has had so little success in the last decade and changed their one Stanley Cup coming in 99. So that's all for this. But man, credit to you, Stars. And I might not be a diehard hockey fan, but you've officially got my attention. I'm watching every remaining game this postseason. And I'm... I can't wait, man. I'm already psyched for game one against the Blues.